You've already started to listen to a multiple sources.net podcast. And for more episodes of it's always sunny in Phoenix podcast, as well as other content, such as other NBA teams, pro wrestling, and even comic books. Oh, what? Visit multiple sources.net. And if you want to join the MS family, go to their website. MS is always looking for more writers and other podcasts, as well as video editors. If you want to join the family, just go to multiple sources.net and check out the sidebar or something. Uh, they got something set up. Check it out. Are you ready? Oh, uh, yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to It's Always Sunny in Phoenix, a weekly podcast where we keep you up to date on everything Phoenix Suns basketball. Uh, today, we're going to keep things pretty quick since we're a man down and give you a Suns health checkup now that we're heading into training camp and the preseason is quickly approaching. I'm Charlie, and it's just me and Mitch here today. How's it going, man? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, excited as we approach the actual season uh like you said training camp right around the corner and um before we get going here i just want to give a quick update on what we have coming up uh with the podcast here and we've got some fun stuff planned uh some really exciting stuff coming up some some announcements but uh for now i'll just mention that we're, we're gonna do this health check-in t- today uh then Next week, we, we planned a segment called Suns Alternate Universes, where we're going to talk about what if LaMarcus Aldridge signed with the Suns or something like that. I don't, I don't know if that's one we're going to actually do, but we're just going to explore some, uh, some things that could have really changed the team and see, see what the NBA would have looked like. Uh, after that, we're going to do... What, what what I like to call the beginner's guide to the Suns, since uh, we had a really good draft, things are looking up. We imagine there's going to be some new fans. So the beginner's guide is going to be um, just really uh, for for people who don't know a whole lot about it, uh, about the team yet, but are really excited, and it'll be a great refresher course for the diehards. Um, and then we're going to do a season preview because we're going to be right there October will be here before we know it and I can't wait yeah I can't wait either I'm ready for some real basketball once again the football's holding me off for now but we need that basketball soon we do all right before we get started make sure to get a hold of us on social media hit us up on Twitter under the handle at sunny in PHX pod check out our Facebook under the name Phoenix Suns multiple sources and our email is sunnyinphxpod at gmail.com. And also go check out the webpage at multiplesources.net slash phoenix suns. Okay, so there's actually been a few pieces of suns news lately. There was quite a lull here, so we're happy to report on this a little bit. And we'll talk about these uh, this health checkup and check in with all of our sons before we get started here. And let's start with the good news first. And over the last week... Two sons have been fully cleared for activity this offseason here, and they are Eric Bledsoe and TJ Warren. And we both know how important these guys are to the team, so it's a big relief to hear that they have been healthy and they'll be healthy heading into the season. And just as a reminder, Bledsoe tore his meniscus, and Warren broke a couple bones in his foot during the regular season last year, and we've been missing them for quite a few games, ready to have him back. So, Mitch, what do you think about these two guys coming back? Yeah, it's it's huge to have both of them. Bledsoe is arguably the best player on our team, um, definitely the best ball handler, uh, very solidified veteran presence, and we were really missing him last year, so it's, it's going to be good to have him healthy. And uh, we talked about him quite a bit last week, but I think it's important to note that uh, a torn meniscus isn't quite as bad as a torn ACL, MCL. Um, it it could have been a lot worse, and a lot of the reason that he was held out for the rest of the season after he got hurt was precautionary, and the way the season went, it just wasn't worth it to, to risk him aggravating that injury at all. So I think he's going to come back very fresh. I mentioned last week that I want to 
uh, ease him in, take a pretty conservative route, uh, getting him back at it. But I do think he'll be pretty fresh because um, he's had a lot of time to heal, so that's good. And then having TJ Warren will be great because he's continuing to develop and being out with an injury really hinders that. So uh, it, being back on the court is the best thing for him. Right, and with Bledsoe, when we were missing him last year, it seems like the guys that we put in to make up for his loss, uh, they kind of did the jobs that he did, but it took numerous guys to do those jobs, and obviously not to the extent that Bled can do them. Like, you need a, you need a floor general and a hustler and a, and just a, a good defender. That was Ronnie Price, but... Yeah, not it's just not Eric Bledsoe. And then scoring wise, you put out Brandon Knight. He can get buckets, but not as efficiently as Bled. So I, I just really like to see him back on the court with all these guys. Yeah, it was Ronnie Price did a great job filling in. I thought um, it's hard to have Eric Bledsoe light or diet Bledsoe out there every game, <laughs> but. Uh, Ronnie Price did a great job, and, and Sonny Weems, we tried to uh, use him a little bit. I, he, he's a bit of a different player, but he was kind of one another one of those guys who got more minutes because he just found his way a bit more into the rotation until he was no longer on the team. But uh, uh, you just can't compare those guys to Eric Bledsoe. He, he is a very good player, and I think people forget that when they uh, – aren't able to watch him for a good chunk of the season. Yeah, and hopefully a healthy Bledsoe also will mean that we don't have a carousel of 10-day contracts or 15-day contracts right. coming in and out. Man, we had, oh, I don't know the exact number, but 23 or 24 Suns players last year. So yeah, that, was that was just a, a turnstile into the locker room, put on your Suns jersey, and you, right. you better just leave it in the locker on your way out because you're probably not going to be back. <laughs> yeah, as 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 exciting as it was for uh, Lorenzo Brown to come and play after setting the record for scoring in a single game in the D League, I, I'm happy to have Bledsoe back. <laughs> right. Hey, and then don't forget about Jordan McRae, who yeah happens to sign on with the Cavs and. Yeah, lucky him. Get that's a ring a, out of the deal. That's a, that is a great situation for him. <laughs> I think they uh, brought him back this year. I think they they gave him a confirmed guaranteed contract for the year. So good for, good him. for him. Yeah. yeah. And then just a little bit about Warren before we move on. Um, I've said this numerous times, but he's one of my favorite guys on the team. That old school style he has. Love watching him play. And just a... Him being healthy, I'm, I'm really disappointed he missed out on so many games last year and all that practice time as well because he needs to step up his defense, and the only way you can really become a better defender is to defend people year-round through practice. So I, I hope he gets picked up early on that here in training camp. Yeah, for sure. And last year would have been a great season for him to play a lot more minutes because of the way the season was going, the, the tank and all of that, he would have been able to play so much more. Um, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to. So, yeah, it, it did hinder his development. And like you said, just you got to do it. Experience is the best way uh, to, to get better on defense especially. So I think this will be a big year for him, though. Yep, and last year – it would have been much more enjoyable to watch Warren and Booker run the tank. Yep. <laughs> Just, yeah. You, you all know what I'm talking about. Yep. It's a new season. Okay. Yep, new season. We're ready. And uh, I guess we'll talk about the bad news, somewhat bad news for our son's health checkup. We'll talk about P.J. Tucker a little bit. So Mitch has the, the inside scoop on this, but he just underwent a successful lower back surgery. And it looks like he'll be out six to eight weeks. And that puts us into mid to early November. So the season will be underway. So we'll be we'll be missing PJ a little bit to start the year. So Mitch, let's hear it. Yeah, so 
I, I just kind of want to explain a bit more about what this surgery is because when I first heard what he had, I was like, oh, that sounds really serious. I wonder how long he's out. And then I saw six to eight weeks and I thought, maybe I better do a little more research. So what he had is called a low back microdisectomy. And what that is, is I'll put it in layman's terms. Um, it's basically a pinched nerve in your spine in the lumbar area, so lower back. And what it does is it creates a lot of pain in the legs. Uh, so really, it's not back pain that's the that's the issue. It's leg pain. And uh, w- what they do in this surgery is they they remove a small piece of the spine, the actual bone, um, and then they put the disc. Uh, a lot of times it's caused by a herniated disc. They put the disc back into the correct place, and that decompresses all of the pressure that's on the nerve, and then that uh, alleviates the pain. Um, the actual term is called nerve impingement, so they're they're relieving the impingement of the nerve that's causing the leg pain. Um, the incision that they make is really small. Uh, it's It's not super serious. Uh, especially because he is a professional athlete, you know, his body is in peak condition. If, if a regular person had this surgery, they would need a lot more time to recover a lot more physical therapy, that kind of stuff. But I'd be out for months. Right. Exactly. Um, but, uh, (laughs) since, since he's in great condition and he has access to these top class trainers and therapists and all of that, he can recover, um, a lot more quickly. So, uh, six to eight weeks is still tough since he'll miss the beginning of the season. But uh, since everything went well, it, it sounds like it, it'll be good and he'll be back out there before we know it. Well, that was an excellent job of explaining that. I feel like I know what's going on a little better now. So <laughs> well, thank that's you. great. Well, and, and yeah, when I did hear this, I heard lower back surgery and I thought PJ Tucker. And yes, PJ Tucker is a machine of an athlete. But he's he's pulling around some weight compared to a lot of other NBA guys. If you just want to compare it that way, that's true. That's true. So yeah, when you when you consider lower back and uh, a well built man, I, I just I, I thought the worst right away. But when I saw this was a minor procedure in only six to eight weeks, that uh, that got my hopes up quite a bit for the whole deal. For sure. So PJ is going to miss some time and definitely will miss. All of the preseason, I'd say, right? Yeah, yeah. I so he'll think so. he'll be missing this preseason. So I think this is a prime opportunity for the Suns to play their two new rookies who can possibly fit into that three slash four role. So who do you think is going to have to step up the most just to get us through the preseason here? I, I mean, I think it's going to be T.J. Warren. I think that having P.J. out is going to give <clears throat> Bender and Chris. Uh, a few more minutes within the rotation, but I really think that we should start TJ uh, in that in that spot. Yeah, I, I totally think so too. I think Warren and man, good thing he's healthy. Yep. I couldn't imagine. I, I guess we were kind of in a situation like this last year where TJ was the only true small forward on the roster for a period of time until we got Budinger and. <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what I would think is if, if we didn't have TJ, the way we would have to run the, the lineup would be Bledsoe at the point, uh, Brandon Knight playing the two, and then probably have to run Booker at the three. But luckily we aren't in that position, and TJ can get some very valuable preseason minutes. If anyone needs preseason minutes, it's going to be TJ, along with the the new guys but I, I think that will be a great opportunity for him to get back into the swing of things. Right. And I think this would be a great opportunity for us to let Dudley go back to his roots a little more, go to that small forward position. And then this is the time to put in Chris and Bender at that four spot and just see what they can do through the preseason. I mean, maybe, maybe when the big lights are on them, maybe one of them takes a big step up and, we don't want to take him off the court. And uh, I don't know if that guy's going to be Chris or Bender at this point yet. I'd really like to see right. some more f- 
full squad action compared to the just the summer league that we've seen him play in is all. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think it, it shows a couple things. One, the preseason can can be deceiving. I just remember last year when we saw John Luer looking amazing in the preseason. And we were all so excited that, oh, wow, we got this guy for a second-round draft pick. Like, what a steal. I know I was thinking that. And then oh yeah, it just, it just didn't quite work out that way. But, um, yeah, preseason can be a little bit deceiving. But uh, to go back to the summer league, I think this will be great for Bender because he didn't have the strongest summer league performance. And if you remember to the summer league before this, Devin Booker didn't either. And – the preseason really helped him continue to settle in. So I think it'll be really big for Bender for that reason. That's a really good point. I keep forgetting that Booker did not look good in summer league when he came in. And I I hate to admit this, but I have before. I wasn't big on Booker when we drafted him. And I, I really wasn't feeling confident in him after that summer league. But he obviously turned me around and... I'm glad he did, or else, man, what what would the Suns franchise look like without I know it. Our, our rising star, Devin Booker? <laughs> yeah, it, it would be amazing. But, yeah, I think it goes to show that spending a, a couple months just with the coaching staff and all the player development people and, and the teammates, you know, working out with those guys helps a lot. And summer league, you're fresh out of the draft. You haven't spent a lot of time with those guys you're learning a completely new system for someone like Bender. You're learning a completely new style of play. Same with Chris, but maybe not to the same extent. Um, so yeah, it, it's a huge adjust, adjustment, and they get thrown right into it, which is great because you can see a lot of raw talent right away. But yeah, th- things change a lot from summer league to preseason to regular season. Absolutely, and you made a good point about guys just starting to spend time with the staff, and this is another thing I didn't want to pass over, but we almost did. The Suns signed Mehmet Okur as a, is he assistant or player development coach? Uh, One of the two. I think he's one of the player development guys. Okay, well I saw a picture, I think it was Twitter, him and Len out to lunch. You know, we've got that, that European big man love going, and now Bender needs to get in on that too. Absolutely. And Okur was a great player, and I think I saw a piece about him almost coming to the Suns to uh, while Nash was still here. Huh. And Okur was he was an all-star at one point. I mean, he, he played some good ball, so he he's a great guy to have on our staff. And with all the staff changes Watson has been making, I'm I'm just very excited to see what those guys can do with our young team. Yeah, that's for sure. And I know that him, he and Watson are, are close, and it's, it's exciting to see Watson put together his staff. Um, it, it's still a bit of a mix of the last regime and this new one, um, so I expect maybe a couple more changes, but it's really exciting to see. It's, it's definitely a new era of Suns basketball. Right on. And let's go back and talk a little bit more about who's got to step in for PJ. So we think Booker might be seeing a little three. We think Warren will be seeing a little three. Do Oh, Warren will obviously be seeing a little three, but we think Bender might be seeing some of that too. Is there any chance we just go three guards, even if it's not Booker in? Do, do we just throw out three guards? Yeah, I think that's possible, especially in the preseason. I, what I'm looking for in the preseason is just experimental lineups. I want to try anything and everything. I want to try going huge. I want to try going tiny. I want to try going very average. You know, I, I want to see every <laughs> look. And I'm probably not going to get that because then that gives opposing teams a lot of tape on some stuff they could try when the games count. But, sure, you know... That's something that I would love to see, and we will see a little bit of it. Probably not to the extent that I'm hoping, but we're definitely going to get to see Bender play the three, which I'm really excited about. Um, and Booker too, you know, his that's another place he can develop his game. He didn't have the opportunity to to do that. His post up game, he's grown a little bit since the last time we saw him play. 
Um, he, I heard he's six foot nine, and w- if he wears six pairs of socks. <laughs> well, I guess he can just, <laughs> depending on who we play, depending on who he has to guard, he can change sure. how many pairs of socks he wears. I guess. Yeah. I don't know if there's yeah. a rule about that. But. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm excited for all of the possibilities, really. And I think this could be where. This might be Archie Goodwin's one last chance. You know, I, I think maybe he's he has good size. He's been putting on quite a bit of muscle. He's six foot five. I think yeah. he can match up with a lot of those small forwards like Kent Bazemore. He's six five. He's a he's a solid small forward. So yeah, yeah. I think I think Archie really needs to really show a lot this year if he expects to uh, get a good contract when that time comes. Yeah, that's for sure. It's this is going to be a pivotal season for him, probably more so than anyone else on the roster. Um, it's it's just one of those times where it's kind of make or break. It's he he had some great flashes last season when he was given the opportunity, and he also had some duds. It's it's going to be big for him. But if you follow his Snapchat, which I do <laughs> and the vast majority of what he posts is just him in the car or him sitting on the toilet. Um, he, he actually is working hard. You can tell he's, he's in the gym a lot. I, uh, I, when I watch, I think he must be driving to go work out or something. Like, I don't he's, know. What he's else being dro He's being driven to those places. I'm pretty sure oh, he's just, he's, he's just rocking in that passenger seat. Just <laughs> doing his thing. Oh, that's, that's a great point. I never even noticed that. <laughs> I, w- I wonder what his dude driving thinks. He's like, oh, Snapchat time, Archie. You're going to rock out about seven or eight of these and then just let me drive you around town. Like they, they pull yeah. up to the gym and Archie's like, yo, I, I got to send out like three more snaps <laughs> before we get in there. Dude's yeah. just like, all right, man, let's go. That's that's probably what happens on the days he gets a haircut because oh, he's, yeah. he's always talking about that hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it, it does look like he's working very hard. Yep, for sure. So uh, we're about – I think we've gone through about everyone here who has a chance of filling in for PJ, unless you got anything else. No, I, I think that covers it. Right on. Well, we said it was going to be quick today. We held to our word. We miss we miss David. He does most of our talking for us. I w- I just feel like this episode has not been quite as savory as usual. It's it's just not as sweet and savory as it normally is. No, just missing that little piece. <laughs> I just I just wonder what he's doing right now. You know? Yeah, it's it's just something that the whole world is probably wondering. I know it. <laughs> uh, just all of our fans, you, like just the masses of our fans. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? What Where in the world, the world is, is Savory, Savory McDavery, McDavery doing? doing? Yep. <laughs> Quote it. That's what. <laughs> let's make a. Let's make a series. I think like that show turned into like a computer game series. Yeah. And everything. It, it was huge. Savory Davery naming rights. We need to get on that. We yeah. just need to take advantage of that enterprise. <laughs> Okay, yeah. All right, we're getting carried away. Let's let's just uh let's end it like we always do. It's time for Mitch's face melting minute and then I'll ramble on about something for a little bit. So, take it away, Mitch. All right. So, as tempted as I am to plug a comic book today, I'm not going to. Um I'm going to plug an album that came out earlier this year called Dig Deep by After the Burial. It's very short. It's a uh, 38 minutes long. So you can listen to it on your commute or whatever. It's very genty, if you like that term. Uh, My favorite songs are Collapse, Lost in the Static, uh, Catacombs, and The Endless March. It's very chuggy, and it's fun. I do not know what any of those descriptive words meant, but (laughs) we're going to go with it. Chuggy. (laughs) Right on. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Well... Man, this is kind of sad, but I've been staring at my Vizio, my 32-inch Vizio TV for the last, like, few days just way too much because the new 2K came out, and I've just been, I've been abusing that in my free time. That's pretty much all I've been doing. 
So I, I just want to tell you a little bit about this TV. I bought this thing like eight years ago, and it has moved across the country with me six times. This this wow. TV has been to six different houses slash condos of mine, and it's you know it's kind of become a fixture up in my office, and I just love the thing. But I, I really don't want to keep going on about that because it's lame. But I'm just going to break our non-sports portion of this plug, and I'm going to talk about 2K17 because I've yeah I've been playing a ton. My career is a lot of fun. The story mode's great, especially compared to that Spike Lee story from last year. That just wasn't any good. This one actually it like hits you in the feels a little bit. Like the the acting and the storytelling is really good, and I haven't hit the park yet but I want to, and this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to post all of our gamer tags in the post for this podcast. So Mitch is on Xbox, yep. me and Savory Dave are on PS4. So I'm going to post our tags. You send us a friend request, say, yo, listen to the podcast, and then we'll get some games going. Like we'll, we'll play, we'll get some pro-am going, five on five if enough people join up. Or we'll just head to the park, do some two on two, three on three business. I mean, why not? Yeah, that, let's that let's do it. We we your, all love it. Use your journeyman of a TV. Yeah, it's that's exactly what's up. Yeah, so uh, definitely, I I, I just had to that. I had to start non sports, so I I could just in in the essence of our plug, I just had to start with the TV business, but I just wanted to talk about two K. Yeah, you can't not plug 2K this yeah. week. It's, yeah, 2K day. That's a thing. People talk about that. Yep. All right. I think that's going to do it. Nice and easy today. So be sure to check us out on social media. Follow us on Twitter under the handle at Sunny and PHX Pod. Facebook under the name Phoenix Suns Multiple Sources. Uh, email us at SunnyandPHXPod at gmail.com and head over to the website at multiplesources.net slash phoenix suns. So, thank you for tuning in. Check in next week for the alternate Phoenix Suns universes, and we'll see you then. Go Suns!